the summer after my sophomore year, I made a decision that would change my life. It was the same decision that many of you in here have already made before. Where to work over the summer. For a lot of us younger folk, the jobs that we take over the summer are basically any job we can find, and they're usually not very interesting. The goal is typically to make a bit of money, to maybe save up for a car, pay for college, or just to have some spending money to hang out with friends. And these motivations are completely valid. I wanted the same things too. I saw a job opening at a smoothie shop that paid slightly over minimum wage. Plus, you got a free smoothie at the end of each shift. I love smoothies with a passion, so this sounded pretty good to me. But I had another option. A local organization called the Kansas City STEM Alliance offered me the opportunity to volunteer at some of their app developing camps for girls. For those of you who might not know, STEM stands for science. Technology, engineering, and mathematics. And while the money and free smoothies really tempted me, I ended up deciding to take the volunteer position with the STEM Alliance. So why would I, a broke high school student with a passion for smoothies, turn down a paid position in favor of an unpaid one? Well, it was because the job at the KC STEM Alliance spoke to an even greater passion of mine, a passion for supporting girls in technology. You see. Back when I was in the fifth grade, I had attended one of those app developing camps for girls, where I had learned how to develop my own applications for smartphones. It was especially cool because, since it was girls only, it felt like a safe and supportive environment for me to learn how to code. In fact, I had such a positive experience that I have continued to study computer programming after the camp. Despite being the only girl in many of my later computer science classrooms, it was that initial experience where I felt safe and excited about coding that has allowed me to persevere. So I figured that if I could help for girls to have that same experience, I'd have done something valuable. And that turned out to be 100% the case. I had a terrific time that summer helping for younger girls to learn how to code. So when I think about my life after that summer. I'm reminded of a video game. There was this weird PlayStation game I used to play called Katamari Damacy. In the game, you play as a space alien who is given the task of rolling up small stars and planets. To do this, you have a sphere called a katamari, and you roll it around, picking up objects from around Earth. You start out by picking up smaller things like paper clips, but eventually you can pick up larger things like cats, people, trees, and even buildings. And if you're really good, your katamari gets turned into a new star or a new planet. My life after that summer has been like playing katamari. I've been able to keep rolling and picking things up. Today, I would like to talk to you about how I've begun to roll up the world. One thing at a time, and how you can start to as well. And as I see it, if you want to start rolling up the world, you have to start by being passionate about something. The sphere in my Katamari game was my passion for girls and technology. Without that, this adventure would have never begun. I know that if I had heard that a few years back, I wouldn't have had a clue of what my passion was. Passions are sometimes easy to recognize, but difficult to pinpoint. For example, I told you that I had a passion for smoothies, but that wasn't really what my passion was. You can like soccer or photography or coding or even smoothies, but what do you like about these things? Or do you have something that you don't like and a reason you don't like it? Figure out what you like or don't like about what you are currently doing, and use the skills you have. To provide a better experience for others, suddenly you have a passion. But that passion means nothing if you don't act upon it. My volunteering with the Kansas City STEM Alliance was me taking my passion and using it to roll up opportunities. And this wasn't the only time I was able to do this. While my, the app camps were the first thing I rolled up, they certainly weren't the last. Most of the time, one thing led right into the next. Because I had worked at the app developing camps over the summer, the Kansas City STEM Alliance offered me the opportunity to meet Malala, the Nobel Peace Prize winner from Pakistan. 
Malala was speaking in Kansas City, and I was invited to join her and other young girls at a small Q&A event. Malala won her Nobel Peace Prize because she stood up for girls' rights to be educated. After speaking with her, I knew that I could do more to support girls in my own community. And after meeting Malala, the sponsors of her visit asked me to speak about what that experience was like. So I attended the sponsors' event, and I talked to them about what meeting Malala was like and how much of an inspiration she was to me. I also spoke about my own passion for supporting girls in technology. After my little talk, I got introduced to some influential Kansas City women, like Joy Wheeler, the CEO of Girl Scouts in our region, and Julie Wilson, who is the Chief People Officer at Cerner Corporation. This leads me into my second tip. Find mentors to encourage and support you. Because, like in the game, you're going to be rolling up things that might seem bigger than you can handle. Make it a point to keep talking to these people as you go along. As you will see, it has been the people who have given me guidance that has allowed me to get to the point where I can come and speak to you on the stage. And I recognize that my young age has given me an advantage here. Organizations and corporations are interested in hearing my young perspective. This doesn't mean that older individuals cannot find mentors, but it does mean that for all of you in middle school, high school, or college, that you are in a great position to find mentors who can help you to get your voice raised in your community. Whether it's people who are willing to read the emails you send out, like my dad sometimes does for me, people who will help you to find the next opportunity, like the Kansas City STEM Alliance did when they helped me to meet Malala, or just people who are willing to listen to your problems, like how some of my favorite teachers have done for me. It is important to find people who will help you to learn to roll up your katamari. You can't do everything on your own. Find people who can help. Malala was an inspiration to me, but it was people who sat down with me, like Joy Wheeler and Julie Wilson, who have really helped me to figure out the path on which to roll my katamari. And after speaking with these women, I knew I needed to stay true to my word and create more opportunities for girls in STEM. I had read about a club in Kansas City called Girls Who Code, and I thought that joining it might be a good way to learn about how to get more girls involved with coding. However, when I contacted the local club, they told me that they were full. That's when a light bulb went off. If I couldn't join an existing club, maybe I could start a new one. So I talked to people at both my high school and at the Kansas City STEM Alliance about starting new Girls Who Code clubs, and they both agreed. This was probably the largest thing I had rolled up thus far, because it allowed me to make a positive impact on girls year-round. This leads me into my third tip. Look beyond the usual jobs and school-related activities. Beginning my Girls Who Code Club was just the start of me going out into my community to find new ways to interact with people. Going into my community to find these opportunities showed to others that I had the initiative to go above and beyond the norm and that I truly was passionate about supporting girls in STEM. During this time, I also joined the Women's Foundation Girls Leadership Program. This program invited me to volunteer at TEDx Women KC. So I worked at the t-shirt table at that event, and I asked some of the coordinators how I could get involved in future TED events. They told me about joining the planning committee for TEDx Youth KC. So my katamari is growing, and so is my calendar. Because at this point, after school, I'm either going to a TEDx Youth KC meeting, a Girls Leadership Program meeting, a Girls Who Code Club meeting, and on top of this all, I still had homework and extracurriculars. I'm keeping busy, but I'm loving it. This leads me into my next tip. Don't wait for the next thing to find you. And if something does find you, don't say no because it's unfamiliar. The opportunities that I just mentioned are not necessarily STEM-related. However, I was able to bring my STEM knowledge to these organizations in order to help them. Take every opportunity you are given, including volunteer opportunities, and don't be afraid to incorporate your passions into everything that you do. The Women's Foundation also offered me the next big thing I could roll up, speaking to 1,500 people at their annual luncheon. 
Because of the initiative I had shown in STEM in the community, and because I was a part of their program, they asked me and another girl to speak about what we had learned from their program about leadership. One cool thing is that the girl who spoke alongside of me, Sophia, was Miss Teen Missouri at the time, and she is now Miss Teen USA. A second cool thing is that I shared the stage with Madeline Albright, who was the first female Secretary of State, and Ann Compton, who is an ABC News White House correspondent. I got to speak with both of these women, and they both encouraged my passion in STEM. Okay, so now we're into 2017, and because of some of the people I had met earlier, I have found new things to roll up. Remember those app developing camps I mentioned? Well, at those camps, I taught the amazing Erin Smith. Erin invited me to start a new program with her called KC Steminists. With the help from sponsors, we ran this program not only to teach girls about technology, but about entrepreneurship and global issues. Also, remember at the sponsors event, I met Julie Wilson from Cerner? Well, with her help, I figured out how to leave school two hours early every day to go work an internship over at Cerner. I worked in cybersecurity, and I had some amazing experiences. And because of all the work I had done in STEM, I had begun to earn some recognition. I was featured in multiple publications. I was the national award winner of the NCWIT Aspirations in Computing Award. I continued my Cerner internship over the summer, where I probably made up for that unpaid summer the year before. And at this point, I was able to roll my Katamari on a global scale. I applied to attend the Waisai Girls Steam Camp in Malawi, Africa. They chose 20 girls from the United States and 80 girls from Africa to gather together to create solu technological solutions to problems in both African and American communities. Because of everything I had done in Kansas City, I was selected as one of the lucky 20 girls. We spent nearly three weeks in Africa, and I got to study under such amazing organizations as Google, NASA, Intel, the Department of State, the American Society of Microbiology, and the UN's Girl Up campaign, among others. I had experiences that could fill up a totally separate TED Talk. And even since then, I've been able to do some pretty awesome things. I've given this TED Talk on the TEDx Youth KC stage and the TEDx Women KC stage. I have loved being able to share my journey with others in hopes of inspiring them to take a similar path. And because of everything I've mentioned to you so far today, I was selected as Inc. Casey's youngest ever 30 under 30, which is an incredible honor. And there's a lot of things that I've done that I haven't even mentioned today, but suffice it to say, I'm continuing to stay busy and follow my passion. And that's how I've been rolling up the world and some tips for how you can as well. But my last and probably most important tip is to help others. It might seem crazy to think about, but you know something that most other people don't. No matter what your age is, you have an insight that you can share with others. For example, I'm a high schooler, but yet, even though I'm going to be the youngest person on this stage, I've been able to hopefully inspire you or teach you something. You are never too young to make a difference. The path that I've taken is not an ordinary path. But that doesn't mean an ordinary person couldn't have a similar one. You just have to have the drive to do something and work for it. And as you work for it, make sure to pull up others alongside of you. Use where you are to help other people up. Trust me, it's going to pay off. I sometimes wonder about an alternate timeline where I take the job making smoothies. Maybe it would have led to different but equally cool things. Or maybe not but I'm happy to be in the timeline I'm currently in. I have used my passion to roll up opportunities, and I have continued to roll up opportunities as I go. I'm excited to keep rolling up my Katamari to see where in the cosmos I go, and I hope you too can start to roll up the world one thing at a time. Thank you.